We're gonna shoot some uh, long distance bow hunting practice shots um, today and I'll talk about why it's important. Uh, I think it's one of the most critical practice strategies you can have with your bow hunt this fall. I'll tell you what, I use this quiver, I think when I was a lot skinnier back in the day. So it still fits kinda a little bit, but um, follow along. We'll shoot some arrows a long distance. I think we'll shoot out to 70, 80 today. And, uh, and again, you know, not something I'm ever gonna take in the whitetail woods, but very critical that you're practicing further than you think you'd shoot in the woods. I recommend double. So we'll shoot out to 70 to 80 today and see what happens. What I noticed is something, you know, people put a whole lot into tuning their bows. And it's funny, I find the most, some of the most that are tuning their bows the most, worrying about their arrow weight and obsessing about every little release, every little adjustment on their bow are the ones that don't shoot very well. And you really just need to learn how to play and shoot. And what I found is if I'm taking uh, this is a Matthews Ultra Rest. I've used it for years. But if I'm setting this up and I'm getting that perfect bullet hole, like when we first set this up a couple Mondays ago, getting that perfect bullet hole, then that's a great starting point. I want that perfect bullet hole for broadheads. I want to step back a few feet, see how the arrow's reacting, making sure I'm getting a good clean tear. It's a good clean bullet hole. And that's going to guide that broadhead a lot better with those veins on. When I'm setting this up for target, it's a little bit different. Um, and some would disagree with me on this, but when I shot really well back in the day, just packing them in at 60 yards, I was getting a slightly high oval bullet hole. And so it was just a slightly high shot, uh, getting it away from the riser. And to me, that was basically that, that uh, um, nice clean bullet hole tear is almost like a knuckleball sometimes. You put the broadhead blades on it, you shoot it, uh, it'll fly well if you kick that high left for more like my target setup that I want, then that broadhead's gonna wanna dart to the right or it's gonna catch plane some way. So I'm starting with that perfect bullet hole tear. And then really when it gets down to it, I'm literally about 20 clicks from that. Very, very micro adjust on this uh, Ultra Rest, Integrate Rest from Matthews. Very, very small adjustment. I mean, we're talking about that much. And it's, I mean, just barely much space between my fingers. But with that right there, it's not that far off to be really out of tune that way. I could spin this 15 clicks either way and I'm still gonna be able to keep a decent group down there at 70, but especially at 40 where I'm just about consistently hitting that three inch circle. I have some fine tuning to do, but a lot of bull hunters aren't going to notice that fine tuning. And so when people are you know, searching for those heavy arrows or light arrows, whatever might be, and then different releases, different sites, you're, you're forever chasing problems that aren't going to be corrected by your equipment. It really boils down to your shooting form and a lot of practice. And while we're at it, heavy arrows, ridiculous. You know, you can take a, a 392 grain arrow. I'm shooting at about 62 pounds. This bow right now is probably only about 58 pounds. I, my bows, my hunting bows are about 62. And the kinetic energy between this and a 600 grain arrow is minuscule. And penetration tests don't show any difference. What does happen with those 665 grain, 650 grain arrows, it sounds cool, we're gonna break shoulder. No, you're not. And people are actually shooting shoulder on purpose and that's just ridiculous, unethical. And uh, I wouldn't allow anybody to ever, I, I, I couldn't be friends almost with someone like that. It's ridiculous. But the heavy grain arrow slows the arrow down considerably. So we're talking a difference of 30 to 35 yards. You misjudge the, the distance on a 280 to 300 feet a second bow. You might be off four inches, five inches six inches you get that 650 grain arrow you're off eight inches 10 inches 12 inches huge huge difference so you have to be point on when you're sitting in a tree stand and knowing if that buck is at 27 yards or 32 yards with a more balanced arrow i'm not telling you you should shoot a 250 grain arrow or 300 or 312 i've shot 320 back in the day i think it was 319 with a 100 grain point or 80 grain point and but a more balanced arrow at 400 grains will allow for you to have some miscalculation in judgment when you're out in the woods. Nothing's exact when you're out in the woods. So you're talking really a difference of two, three, four percent of kinetic energy, really in the end, uh, five percent at most. And the gel tests, the penetration tests with the same arrows are not showing um, that great of an impact. And, you know, really, 
I think a lot of times you're measuring how far it's gonna stick in the ground on the opposite side, and if it hits that, that shoulder blade, and especially that blade and that joint right there, you're not gonna get through that, that uh, bone no matter what you do. So that balanced arrow is always best, and we get a little bit of release when we're shooting 3D and in the woods, and really um, understanding how, that, how much that arrow actually drops in the field, and that balanced approach will give you a lot more leeway and room for error when you're judging in the field where nothing's perfect. Hey, sorry to interrupt this video, but my web class series is finally begun. How to design your whitetail property is on my website and there's a link in the description. Please check it out. Now we might as well uh, start right out at the big yardage, but 70 yards down there. And this is kind of cool because uh, you know, when I used to shoot competitively back in the day, I could shoot out to 65 yards in the, in the UP of Michigan out in my yard. And I uh, really miss that. And so with getting this home and farm that we bought, it's a real priority for me to have a couple long range shooting uh, ranges. So we have a pile of morel targets coming and we already have some. From right here, I can shoot 70 yards. What's nice is I step out here and it's pretty windy. Um, and I feel like, you know, I, I know how to shoot, but I'm not in total shooting shape. So when I get back here, I'm, a little, I'm cheating a little bit. I'm behind the, behind the uh, building here. So that helps a lot. Also cheating because Chris B gave me one of his UltraView uh, scopes to play around with and I love it. I can turn the light on and off right here and I'll definitely use this for target. I'm not going to use this for hunting. Uh, we actually use our black gold sights for hunting. And I have one of those coming this year. Um, used them for many years and so it's cool to play around with this and I like shooting that longer distance and that ultimate accuracy and I feel it hones really honed your archery skills. And um, this is my Matthews VXR uh, 31.5 and 27 inch draw length. I got my little stubby arm, so that's what I hunt, hunt with too. And uh, these are some victory arrows, the TKOs. My old Carter release, you can see it's so old, it's actually the anodize is wearing off on, on this side right here. So some I use this as an old sight right here, custom bow equipment, but I'll turn this all into my hunting bow as it gets closer to the hunting season. I'll use it for indoor. It's been a great bow. But let's them take some shots down, down range and see what happens. And, uh, but again, I want, really want to hone in. And what I encourage you to do is as far as you can shoot back and still keep it on the paper with every shot, continue to shoot and practice. Doesn't matter if your group's a little bit larger. Just keep working on it every day. You'll notice a lot of the things you do wrong are greatly magnified at that distance. So as long as you're keeping it on paper, to me, then you can work on those mistakes that you might have, whether it be gripping your bow a little bit, something in inconsistency with your release, how you're holding your grip, not using your bubble, your level. Uh, they're all things that, that can make little mistakes that you have, not keeping an open grip. So we're gonna fling some down there and uh, I'll get this set hopefully at about the right distance and we'll see what happens. I can't say exactly where they're hitting down there. It's a little ways away and uh, but we're shooting at that yellow dot and it's enough to be on paper. So I feel a little bit shaky, but at the same time, we'll see how good the group is. But I feel really, really good about shooting this distance. It's it'll control my form, how much I shake really have to hone in compared to shooting that 20 that dot at 20 yards. That one was a little low right, <laughs> know that. I'm also using, uh, I like to use during practice a few different releases. Um, I'm not the type to be searching for the next greatest release as far as you know, having a dozen in a box or two dozen in a box. It, you feel like when you see people doing that, they're always trying to search for and help a problem and blame it on a release or some piece of equipment when really it boils back to some shooting form that's not gonna be cured by a certain release. Um, I do like the hinge style releases, the back tension, and I actually use these releases as back tension. This one right here, it's an old Big Kid 3D by Carter. That's one that's wore off. I also have a blue one. This is a Scott Calper release that a lot of you have seen me use in the hunting stand. I like this one a lot for hunting, another Scott uh, wrist caliper release. And then this is uh, one of Jerry Carter's, is an old uh, Carter release called the Insatiable Hole. You can see the hole right there, and it actually has some good balance, so sometimes I use that, but the bottom line is, whether it's my hunting bow or target bow, 
Um, target bow, I'll stick with more of the target releases. Hunting bow, I'll use all of them and uh, try because sometimes I'm getting a cleaner release off with the back tension. And so that always lets me know what my capabilities are as far as overall accuracy. And then I want to match one of these caliper releases to that. So one of the things too, when we're shooting at these longer distances, you're just shooting 70 yards. I have a couple dozen arrows and I typically won't shoot all two dozen, but I really like to shoot 10, 12, 14 arrows at a time. And uh, it's just, I like to sit here and shoot and get in that groove. And if I feel like a mistake, something I'm doing, I want to take care of it. I find the more I shoot, the more I settle down, the more my shakes come down. And, uh, and, and you just want to be in that practice routine of shooting a lot of arrows instead of walking a lot. So we're going to walk down and check out these arrows. I'm going to put some of these releases back. I'm going to stick with my, my big kid 3D today. Now I'm not making any excuses. Um, I'm actually, it feels windy out here. You might be able to hear the wind, see the little flags moving along, but um, it's not what, that windy where I'm at right there. So if I don't have a great group down here, it's just because I stink right now. <laughs> and I'm, I'm really trying to get into shooting shape and uh, really enjoy it. And like, like I said, I haven't had a place to consistently shoot long distance like this for a long time. We're actually making two lanes on this archery range. So we have one on this side of the building, at the corner of that building it's 70 yards and at the corner of this building is 70 yards. So we can shoot on either side for different winds. We have the shorter bale right here so Diane can shoot at 20 yards while I'm shooting at 50 yards. These bigger bales are about 30 yards behind that bale right there and we're going to do the same on the opposite side. So I'm also going to have one in the indoor. I love shooting and like I said it's been a long time where I could just step out the door, go to the pill building and, and actually shoot. So and you can see you know for 70 yards I had one pretty bad flyer there, but there at least some semblance. I remember saying the one time that I hit low right. So I think my group should be more like that when I'm stronger. I know a couple are, were hitting high. I would bet my group is right around in that, that area. But 70 yards, I'll take it for the first round. Um, we'll go shoot, shoot another round at 70 here and see what happens. But you know, again, the whole reason I'm doing this I love shooting long distance. I love honing my accuracy in. Um, not to say I'd ever shoot a deer at 70 yards, but I would shoot at one at 35 to 40 when I'm in good shape, depending on the circumstances. If that deer is not jacked up and nervous and I have that opportunity. So when I say I'd shoot 35 to 40, then to me, I should be shooting 70, 80 in that range. Uh, because boy, you shoot like this at 70, you get that group honed in to the small size of a small paper plate, and then you step back to 35 or 40, you'll be dead on and your confidence will be very high. And that's the entire reason for doing this. So we'll shoot a few more arrows and see what happens. You can see uh, I have this fancy arrow bucket right here, some gravel on the bottom and throw your arrows inside and it works pretty well. Um, you know, one thing when, when you're aiming back down there, you might see me pull back come up to the target down. People say, you know, when I used to shoot really well and uh, people would notice that, then they'd say, where, where are you holding on the target down there? Do you start high, come down, start from the side, go over, bottom up? And the best way I can describe it is when you pull back, your pin should be around the target and you immediately start floating. You're just letting the float settle down into the center of the bullseye most of the time my dot right now is in the middle of that yellow, or not in the middle, but somewhere in that yellow at 70 yards. It used to be able to hold it in the middle. I can't anymore, but at least I can hold it in that yellow. And that's when I say, when it goes off, the bow goes off, I'm using this release as a back tension. And what I'm doing is this is a thumb trigger. So I'm aiming with a solid anchor po point and letting the bullseye float. And eventually as I'm pulling through, these three fingers and the back tension pull and rotate the release into my thumb more so it makes the trigger go off. So it's almost like you're aiming, you're pushing, pulling, you're trying to float in there, you don't know when it's gonna go off. And when I see that pin at the bottom of the target like I did on the first shot or up high right or something, then I know that's where the arrow hits and that's where you can call your shots, meaning that that doesn't mean you're gonna say, I'm gonna hit it right in the center. That means wherever the dot was, when the bolt went off, that's where the arrow's hitting and that's where you know when the bow is tuned well. And, uh, and you can at least keep them on target down there. Um, again, it's not that you're saying exactly where you're gonna hit, I'm not that good, but at least I know that where that pin's at and when it goes off, that's where the arrow's gonna be. And then that really just depends on my shakes then. You know, how, how bad my shakes are, how in, in, uh, in shape I am for shooting, for where it hits.
like that one was probably a little high left. I usually number my arrows, just haven't yet. I've been so excited to shoot, but I like number them because if that was number five and it hit high left, I can go down there and confirm that, yeah, the, the pin was high left when it went off and, uh, and that's where it hit. Now the cool thing is too here, um, I can move up to the flags, they're all measured at 10 yard increments, but from right here, and again, we're staying out of the wind in this little corner, and then I can shoot at the 40 yard bag too. So I like having that option of shooting 70 down there, 40, varying it a little bit. But I typically shoot long range. I might go a couple weeks without shooting 20, 30 yards. Uh, that's more just for verification and, and saying, yeah, that's a lot easier than it is at those longer distances. But boy, when you shoot long distance for a week or two, and then you go back to 20, 30 yards, that seems like a chip shot. It's really easy. Now, the whole reason I shoot 70 is again, I'm gonna back up for bow hunting and I encourage you to do the same. You know, my 40 yard target still has some work to be done, but you know, big difference at 40 yards in the group and that's why I'm shooting at different, uh, different spots on that 40 yard target. You know, I wanna reckon the arrows, but these two would have hit in the exact same spot. Um, you can see this one's over to the right, similar height. I feel good on my height and you know, would have had a nice group putting them together, but that's why I go to 70 and then back to 40. 40 seems a lot easier when you're starting out at 70. And uh, I'm sure that last group was 70. Uh, I don't think it was as good. But, um, but when you're bow hunting, again, probably the number one practice tip for bow hunting as you head into the season is really stretch that yardage out. Do it safely, of course. Do it where you're not wasting arrows and throwing arrows around. But as long as you can keep them on bail and keep a decent group, then uh, then you're headed in the right direction. And you can actually see on these the 70 yard bale, you know, I'm just getting blown around left to right, but at least my height was good. And you can see I have that consistency of that upper right hand corner group. And then I stretched out some over here to the right. And that's just me uh, shooting poorly, not the wind. So we're gonna keep on, uh, keep on practicing and you can bet I'll be in bow hunting shape very quickly and I uh, feel good about where we're at already and can't wait to keep shooting on these ranges.